Cubase has some of the most fully featured EQs in its arsenal. With Cubase 13, we have two more EQs introduced, this time on the colorful side, emulating legendary vintage passive EQs with a sought after sound. Let's have a listen. The EQ P1A and the EQ M5 are two EQs that emulate the sound of classic passive analog EQs. And the difference between these EQs compared to an EQ like Frequency, for example, that we have in Cubase, is that these EQs will give you a more colored EQ. They will give you an EQ sound that has been around for decades and is beloved by many, many engineers. So let me give you a very quick walkthrough of these two EQs. Here we have the EQ P1A, and this is an EQ that will allow you to get some really nice low end, but also some spark highs. So this EQ would work great on vocals, on acoustic guitars, on bass, on kick drums. You can add it to your master bus for sweetening EQ and the curves are designed to give you this iconic sound. The next EQ is the M5 and this takes care of your mid-range. So where the P1A gives you control of the low end and the top end, the M5 will give you lots of control for the mid range. So the mid frequencies, the low mid frequencies and the high mid frequencies. So let me show you one example on an acoustic guitar. It's completely dry and I'm going to start sculpting the sound with these two EQs. I'm going to start with the EQ P1A. So as you can see, what I can do is I can boost the low end. I can set the frequency right here. But you might notice that this guitar now becomes a little bit boomy. And that's the beauty of this style of EQ. You also have an attenuation knob right here, which means I can attenuate at the same frequency. And this gives me an even more pronounced low end, but without making everything muddy. Let's have a listen. Now, if this guitar was for a singer-songwriter track where it was the main instrument, this kind of EQing would do wonders. Let's add some top end now and we have the same exact configuration. We have a high boost and an attenuation knob here. But in this case, I can set up the bandwidth, I can set up the frequency for the boosting and I can have the attenuation frequency that's going to be different. Let's have a listen. Let's bring some air to this guitar. Without. Now I'm going to move on to the EQ M5 and I'm going to start taking care of my mid-range. I'm going to make sure that we have a warm guitar sound. I'm going to remove some of the boxiness and I'm going to add a little bit of presence with the high boost here. Let's have a listen. And now let's listen with and without these two EQs. And these two EQs are designed to complement each other. So if you use the P1A, it might be a good idea to check out what the M5 can do as well in combination. And before I leave you, I want to show you a few more examples. I want to show you how we can use the P1A to enhance the low end and the top end of our drum bus. Let's have a listen.
it's this classic sound that works great for this type of material. Now let's try this on bass. Bass is one of these instruments that are quite tricky to EQ because you want them to be full in the low end, but you also want to take care of their mid range and massage it so that it works with your track. Let's have a listen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some nice low end with the P1A while adding some attenuation to make sure that my bass doesn't become overpowering. And then I'm going to take care of the mid range with the M5. Let's have a listen and see how this bass translates better in the mix. We can hear the low end, but we can also hear the notes. I hope you have loads of fun mixing with these EQs. Don't forget to check out the other Cubase 13 videos to find out what's new in this version, and I'll see you on the next one.